the slightest. I mean, it's been overwhelming. Not in the, we had no idea how it would be received. Absolutely no indication. And we went to Berlin and I was like a nervous, I was really, very nervous. We had no idea how it would go. There was no distance. I, we finished the sound dub like two weeks before the f first, the premiere. So it's been amazing. I mean, it's, you know, I, I read it and I just loved it. Loved it's the wrong word. I just had to do I just wanted to do it. I knew I wanted to do it. I, uh, I didn't really think in terms of controversy or, I didn't think in, ter in those terms, in those, I didn't think, I don't think in terms of career moves or... My whole, my whole mindset was, you know, you, a lot of people that make a first film don't get to make a second film. So I just picked, I tried to pick a film I really wanted to make so that it just meant something and I cared about it. And that was it, that was just how I made my decision. And I, when I read it, I was like, I really connected to what it was saying, what, what I felt. I wanted to, I wanted to s communicate this and, and I developed it with the writer and the producer. Because I wasn't sure at first, I mean, it was, I loved elements of it, but I was like, let's develop and see. And after we started working together, um, every draft I was getting, I was getting more and more pa passionate about it. And in the end, I was completely invested in it. It was like part of me, part of them. It's just one of those things, you know. But it wasn't like a pragmatic move. It wasn't like a, the, ooh, there's all these paths. Well, I'll pick the controversial one. I was just, it just happened. The, the, the riot, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do. I couldn't visualize it till later. I, 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 but I knew what I wanted to do with the explosion, but I don't want to talk away, I don't want to give away anything. But the scene, the scene that I read that I loved and that I almost never changed was when the young boy sees the two older guys and he, at the barricade and he talks to them like they're little, like he, he, he intimidates the older men. And I was like, it was amazing, you got this 11 year old intimidating these full grown men and I loved the scene. And, I, and that scene almost never changed from when I came on board. I have memories of just laughing and just going, and just, just feeling so lucky because I didn't have to direct him a lot. I didn't, it wasn't me that got it out of this young boy, it's this, it's this amazing young talent that we found. And he's a, he's a great boxer. And um, so all I did was make, was just try and keep him in a dominant space and not, and not be distracted by the, the film, the mechanics and the 30 people behind the cat standing around. So we just boxed in between takes. We had pads, he was just boxing. So he was just, it was always like he's, he was always like he's about to have a fight. So he just walked like, he just had this mindset like, you know, I'm the man. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. And then you just, it's like a toy, you just wind him up. He just go do it. And he was, he was the easiest to direct of the cast. Incredible, because he, I don't know, because he's such a, he's been training as a boxer since he was, five so it's half his life and he's just and he's very serious about it so he listens to he listens to you like like a coach so he's like looking at you listening and you're going and you I'd ask him do you know what I mean you go yeah and he'd just do it I wish they were all like that we we always questioned it like as the team and it's given everybody a voice. It's not just me dictating. So the writer was very open with me. I was very open with the writer, the producers. And I was, look guys, I, c I would not feel comfortable making a film about these people's history and taking a side. I just can't. So we have to make sure, no matter how difficult it is to get the story working, we had to make sure we couldn't make anyone we, we had to humanise everyone and make it about the shades of grey. 
and make it about people, just normal people caught in extraordinary circumstances on all sides. Jack O'Connell, I knew I wanted Jack from the beginning. Like, I wasn't sure Jack, it was, I knew he was my reference, but I thought he might be too old. So my casting director, Gina J, she was like, Jan, you should just meet Jack, meet him. So I met him, had a drink with him, had a chat, really liked him. We talked about it. We talked about the character, talked about the world. And then I said, like, you know, I asked him if he'd come and read. And he's like, yeah, OK. And, and he read one scene. We did one scene two or three times, the scene with his younger brother. Because I knew he could do the tough, I knew he had the tougher scenes. I just wanted to see a quiet scene. And, uh, and then that was it, I was blown away. I was like, he's the man, you know, he's the only one. He can do so much. He knows, he knows how to hold a silence. He knows how to communicate that kind of, and he's got a soulfulness, like there's a soulfulness to him, like a kind of, there's something about him, you care about him. He, 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 he is complex, he's a complex person. And he, he put, and that comes across on the screen, you know. So you engage with the man, or the boy, the young man. So anyway, yeah, it was uh, working with him was pretty easy too. I was lucky. Oh, zombies again? Yeah, I mean, zombies was fun. I had fun with it, but you know, there's too many zombies now. Too many zombies, too many vampires. Maybe when the cycle comes around, you know, the cycle. It needs another ten years. Like now we've. I think the zombies and apocalypse, we've had enough of that right now. I think I'd do a film about revolution now, rather than the post-apocalypse. I want to see the apocalypse.